Hey, 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 this is Seagrove, and I'm here today with Jay Young, and we are looking at Trevenant and Expanded. I currently have pulled up uh, Bob Zhang's list from Daytona. He got second. So, um, Jay, why don't you talk to us about this list, uh, maybe some key points or key differences between uh, the way Trevenant seemed to be moving. So, immediately after we got uh, whatever the set Necrozma GX came out of, Everyone immediately jumped on, okay, let's Silent Fear a few times, use Necrozma's attack with a DC D Valley, putting its cost down to two and, you know, doing 100 all EXs and GXs, and we can win the game. Just be a bunch of six prize turns. Um, and a lot of people attempted to do that in Fort Wayne and weren't very successful. And so going into Florida, um, Bob made the decision to not play that. And part of the reason from my understanding, at least from my own testing too, was it's not as consistent as just playing straightforward Trevenant. It's a mix of having DCEs, having another Pokemon on your bench that can be Lysander to Guzma up to break item lock. Just kind of a whole myriad of things. On top of the fact that it's fat and it has really no good use outside of the GX attack. Okay. Um... And then, I guess before we go any further, why don't you uh, give some of your accomplishments, especially uh, with the Trevenant deck? Um, so, this would have been 2015 season. I topped three states with the deck, and then continued to top every turn I played it at up until Fort Wayne this past year in 2017, um, which is three regional cuts, day two... Um, the states, like I mentioned, and then winning a expanded league cup, and then topping a cities the two seasons before. Awesome. So, is there anything else about the list you want to talk about before we hop into a couple games? Um, I think the big thing is captivating Pokepuff is a fairly obscure tech card that people have talked about in the past and not really played. Um, the one thing Trevenant really enjoys doing is hand disruption. Like, that's the d thing the deck kind of thrives off of right now. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple ways you can do it. People did red card for a really long time because randomly putting your opponent at four can win you some games. Um, Bob decided to go the alternative route and, like, basically make Lele worthless between Silent Lab and Puff, which a lot of decks would play one to two, maybe even three of. So if you limit it, and it also eliminates outs for them. A lot of the time, if you, like, end them or just, like, put them in an awkward hand, they can sometimes break item lock, ultra ball for a lele, then, you know, have an out for the next turn. And it allows you to just kind of have multiple ways to control the game. Okay. So, those are the big things. Um, outside of that, it's... Uh, he ended up going with balloons over hammers, which is a more consistent option in an open field. So... Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so I'm just going to jump into a game against some randoms, I guess. Yeah, man. <laughs> and then uh, we'll get started. Um, I've been playing and expanding some really dumb stuff, but I hope, hopefully the, the latter is based on... I don't know if you're, who you play against is based on how well you've been doing in both formats or just in one format but um i'm not really aware of if it's like based off any like real ladder system outside of like client i think there's like a, a hidden elo system but i don't know what it, like how it works yeah because i definitely don't play against the same people other people do um right. so we right. saw water fire colorless psychic so it's likely volcanian Okay. Uh, the big thing will be to try and develop Silent Lab really, really early on um, while trying to control the hand as much as we can. Um, the main reason is Volcanion 3 Energy Steam Up always kills a Trevenant Break, and ideally we're going to want to develop the Break quickly, but also not like overreach with it without developing more Trevenants, because keeping Item Lock active is we're going to keep him from like just kind of blowing up the board. Okay. <clears throat> also, contesting stadium is really good as a start. This looks to be a Turbo Turtle variant, which is uh, the Blacksmith variant, which is like 
less good for us. Okay. Oh yeah. Because of acceleration <laughs> via blacksmith <laughs> via support. Yeah. Yeah. No items basically, or like less items are going to be played on paper. So that's going to be pushing the envelope of the hand control part mm -hmm. of it. So do I? My thoughts going into into our turn. You can tell me mm -hmm. what you think. Is I ultra ball and grab another phantom? So there's a couple ways we can go about this turn. Um, we guarantee have a trevenant de being developed off because we have energy in our hand. Right. Um, probably the correct thing is to actually lele first just to see what's prized because okay. we're obviously going to need a supporter for the turn. So all of our tech supporters are there, which is good. Um, we have one Trevenant prized, one break. Good to know. Uh, our Silent Lab's in the deck, which is really important. And... We got three Psychic in hand, so... That's yeah, cool. and we have two VS Seeker. So two VS Seeker, Trevenant, Trevenant... Uh, what else was prized? Uh, Phantom? Sycamore? And Sycamore, yeah. Okay, okay. So, so our prizes are pretty good, actually. What should I grab? Uh, I'd definitely grab a Sycamore, just because he didn't... Pl he probably has an N in his hand or something. Okay. Um, I would Ultra Ball the... Karen and a psychic, uh -huh. and grab a phantom. And then we have kind of two lines. One is riskier than the other. We can attach <laughs> to the bench and try to get a dig for a D Valley, yeah. which I don't hate. Because uh, honestly, like the likelihood of what his hand is is draw supporter of any kind. Maybe a, another blacksmith or Kiawe or something like that, and probably another fire is really really likely. Okay. So Should we do we're that? not. Yeah, it's basically <laughs> like if we item lock him, it doesn't necessarily matter, uh -huh. um, and we really need to start attacking him. So we do hit the D Valley. And yeah, that hand's actually pretty good. Two trainers mail on Ultra Wall. We had a lot of outs to it, anyways. Um. I would play one of the trainer's mail just to see if we find like poke a puff or a balloon, which we found none of. Um, what's your hand again? Do you uh, show play mat for me? I'd probably just fail that okay. um, because we don't really want anything out of that hand. Um, D Valley would be nice on the theory that he plays another stadium down, but it's kind of a lot of things. Yeah. So I would just do Ascension here. Okay. And now, ideally, he just uses whatever Bright Flame or whatever the second attack is. Takes a knockout and doesn't have an energy attachment. That would be, like, the perfect scenario. Just because it means it's forcing him to have another Blacksmith. Right. But... He has small hand, so hopefully... He doesn't have it could much. also be one of those things where, like, his hand wasn't very good, but he just felt like getting pressure on us first. Okay, okay, great. <laughs> so that does kind of telegraph a blacksmith in his hand. So we should keep that in mind when we're conducting this turn. Okay. <clears throat> so we just evolve first. Um, we had, we had Trevenant's prize. I think I would Ultra Ball the male in an AZ for another Phantom. Okay. And then end him with the Lele. Okay. I think that's what I'd do here. Uh, we could also Shaman. Um, I think I like just saving the Shaman for after we end him. Just to see if we get stuff we want to dig deeper. Yeah. And we have, uh, we have three no Ultra God. Balls left, so... Right. The one scare we're going to run into is we could get low on energy this game just because we had to discard a couple early. Yeah. Um, playing seven is kind of dangerous. And also we're not getting a Trevenant breakout early. So we're not pressuring him just yet, but we're getting there. Okay. That hand kind of sucks. 
Yep. Um, just email to see what we find. Ultra Ball, that's good. Um, I think I'd just take the Ultra Ball, yeah. Okay. And then I would Ultra Ball the Zero Sick Delinquent. And yeah, we're revealing that we play them, but really, is he going to play around them? And then I'd get another Phantom down. Sounds good. And then go ahead and shame and just to see if we find one of those balloons where... We're kind of wanting energy. Either that or puff. Oh, nice! We got the energy. Okay. Um. Do we put it active? Yeah, I think we have to hit him this turn. I think so. I think if we don't hit him this turn, we're just gonna fall really far behind, and I'd save that. Okay. If we were gonna use it, should it should have done before the attachment, anyways, right? Correct. Okay. The other thing is like. We're drawing a card. We're basically telling him, hey, we drew a bunch of things we can't play. It's probably supporters or BS Seekers. Go ahead and end us. Uh, if we're playing a team mail, we're telegraphing the fact that we're looking for something. And right. so it's just kind of better to not do that sort of thing. So this is where, like, if we had a Silent Lab down, it would be nice. Or found that puff, because obviously Layla is for Blacksmith and has an attachment. So again, we're going to fall a little bit behind here. Um, and actually... If we were able to find, if that break was a regular Trevenant and we were able to find like a Wally energy or something, we'd be actually in a pretty okay spot. Um, so considering he committed to that, you can go ahead and promote whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Um, considering he decided to commit to that Turtonator, um, I personally would definitely Guzma the Turtonator on the bench okay. and Ascension with one of the Phantoms. Okay. And you... You could honestly play the balloon, but I think I'd hold it. Should I trainer's mill? Um, mm, no, just hold it again. Because oh. we're playing our supporter for this turn, so we don't really need to dig for anything. So he can probably just think we have a dead hand, so he might not end us, which would be really good for us. Um, just for the sake of, like, keeping his hand under control. Now, if he uh, magically has a knockout on this, we're in big trouble. I shouldn't say magically. He just needs another blacksmith or another lele. Okay, so he's nitro tanking. This is kind of good. Because, let's see here. Um, go ahead and play the breakdown, because we're going to do that anyways this turn. And then uh, check the or no, we don't have to check his discard. Is five energy in play? The deck played thirteen. Thirty-eight cards in deck. Okay. Um, go ahead and play the team mail. Okay. And what am I hoping to get on this team mail? Um. That's not bad. Flare grunt's not bad at all. I wish Headringer hit GXs. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I forgot. Um, Should I grab th that then? Yeah, go ahead and grab the Flare Gun. Um, I'm not sure we're playing it just yet, but it's probably just good to have. And then I would Ultra Ball the Balloon and a Dimension Valley. For a Shaman? Yes. Let's see if we can find another play or like have anything. Because part of our problem is we need the Super Rod at some point. So go ahead and shame uh, it instead of flare ground yeah. for next shit. Okay. Yes. Because we want to hit a draw supporter if we whiff energy. Correct. Okay. We did. Um, okay. So before we do anything, captivating Pokeball. And then we can decide. Yes. He's got dead. Okay. Hands, except for an energy. That is a that is exactly that's so good. Um, Go ahead well, and put it on the bench. Yes. And then, do we have our Lysander in the discard? We have Guzma. I, don't, I know we have Guzma, but no, I don't Lysander. know if we have Lysander. Ah, son of a bitch. <laughs> then do we sick um, Hmm? Do we sick more? Actually. 
what do we do with this hand? This hand sucks. We know he has an energy. I think I would actually kind of end him. Okay. Like, even though his hand is dead, by all means, we really want to end him out of the energy so he can't just attach next turn. Okay. Um, and if we, the problem is, is like, if we goose mud, we... Okay. Well, Santa's trash. Um, yeah, I'd just play the energy and balloon, and we're going to try and dig our way out of this hole. Not that it's likely right now. Do we have... Oh, we have Karen. We do have Karen. I guess we could have theoretically Karen last turn. That probably wouldn't have been the worst. Yeah, go ahead and sign up here. So ideally... Okay, so he played no energy. And again, it probably means he has a blacksmith in hand. Which is also super annoying. Yeah, go ahead and do that. Should I pull up the other Turtonator, or should I... I could Flare Grunt or Karen. I guess I need to Karen, because I need to get item lock. Did we see Super Odd in the deck? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure we didn't. So I think we have to Karen, and I'm pretty sure we've lost. Because oh. if that was the case, we shouldn't have promoted the Phantom. We should have promoted anything else. Yeah, I, we definitely have lost this game, but go ahead and Karen. We'll just play it out for the sake of playing it out. Okay. Because uh, there is there is a hypothetical where our opponent misplays. so, And he could also just have a totally dead hand, which is super unlikely with that deck. But it can happen. This is, by the way, like one of the worst matchups. Like, really, really close to being one of the worst, if not the worst. And that's okay. It. <laughs> so we'll concede there. Uh, Sue, so who we top deck? Lele? Yeah, just Lele. Mm. E Play this on lap. Oh. But, but yeah, I can't. Like, I can't ascension. That's fine. We want an energy, anyways. Okay. Yeah, I just got in scoop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so... Let me look back at the list and make sure... Um, has a super rod? Let's see if it has a super rod. It it should. It was a one of. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Um, if we had Lysander in the situation where we puffed there instead of the Guzma, and this is kind of the problem with playing a 1-1 one -one split... Um, you run into situations like that. We would have been able to pull up the Turtonator when we know he has a dead hand, and we would have had multiple turns to just it's attack great. him, and he couldn't do anything. Yeah. Um, obviously, it didn't happen, and it's fine. Like, you lose games like that. But that's kind of like the... I, would, I don't really want to use the term knife edge, but that's part of the problem the deck does run into. Okay. Uh, this guy's probably playing a mime, it looks like. Oh, I thought it was Gardevoir. Um... <laughs> Maybe. But that means he's playing Octillery and Expanded. You know what? I've seen crazier things. Oh, that hand is good. Don't play the other Phantom Town. Okay, why is that? So the main reason is is if we establish oh, energy Yeah, energy item lock turn one, the chances of them having any way to play to an out is so much lower. Okay, and so the just other do this. big Yeah. And then the other big thing is, like, it forces them to have a supporter for the turn, which forces them to toss resources. And if we're going to play a resource game against Gardevoir, we need that. So, yeah, go ahead and hit done. Wow. Uh, we're not going to Ultra Ball for anything That's else yet. absolutely not what I would have done. <laughs> I would have dropped the Phantom and then like, given him a Guzma target. Yeah, that is... That's a... I don't want to use the term, like, really common mistake, but as a thing a lot of people do, like... The way we win every game on paper is we establish a perfect item lock where they can't have an answer to it. And decks, even though they don't need to run off items, they want to run off items. Mm. And so that's a really big just, uh, just thing to identify. Okay. Top deck trainers now. Let's go. Oh, that'll do. Oh, that's so good. Okay. Um, Karen and... 
Headringer? Yeah, Karen Headringer grabs Sycamore and I play the balloon. Part of me wants to be a tool and just like play it really slow against him, but I think we just need to get a break and play and we'll be fine. Okay. Um, if we had drawn a break off the top or a D valley, I would have told you to probably flare grunt him. So play the energy. And then Ultra Ball, the Lysander, and the Phantom. Oh, wow. Or, no, keep... The, oh, oh, whatever. It's fine. It doesn't matter. It, it, it doesn't matter a lot. Um, yeah, get the break and play. And then you're just going to sign up here. And don't T-mail? No. I was tempted to say toss the T-mail or the Phantom. I think it depends super... It, it matters on a couple things. One, if his hand is really good, we always toss the phantom because okay. we want to have extra resources to be able to like counter whatever his turn becomes. Um, the other side of it is if he didn't have a fetch effect or a Lysander effect, playing the phantom is always right. So if we had perfect information, we play the phantom every time. Um, um, but Right now, he's locked into not being able to play anything besides a Curlia, and he can't attack us. We could. So that means if we find another energy or a D-Valley next turn, we just tree slam him, and it dies. Okay. I think we could have lost there if he had Hex, Candy, Gardevoir. I mean, it requires a lot, but... Uh, he would have been 10 short, but... Uh, so, go ahead and... DC. Yeah. Uh, we have zero sick in there, I think. Or was that in the hand he end? I don't remember. That was in the hand oh. he end, I guess. Oh, okay. So, go ahead and T-mail. Just to see. Uh, yeah, go ahead and grab the Ultra Ball. Okay. And we're going to Ultra Ball for a zero sick. Okay. Or for a Lele for a zero sick, but... Both Sycamore, I trust? Yeah. We're not playing against item left. Doesn't really matter. Uh, yeah, we should double check to make sure it was in the deck, but that's fine. Oh, okay. Just to make sure we weren't bad. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Yeah, I think it was in there. Well, I don't know. I, I remember seeing it at some point, but that really doesn't mean much. Yeah, maybe it was last game. Or something. Yeah. Okay. So DC gets knocked off, which is good. And then we sign the fear and kill his Ralsas, which means we have two turns of not having to deal with any going. <laughs> Which is really good. What is this deck? Uh, this is Trevenant, man. Yeah. It's crazy. It's so good. Most of the time. This is like one of those decks that if you play it perfectly, you should win over 60% of your games. Like, on average. Just because the format's not at a point where people build their deck to deal with item lock. They build their deck to play into a meta that they expect, and the meta hasn't been Trevenant-focused for a very long time. Yeah. And even when it was, it had a very good win rate into a format. So. That's really good for us. And Trevenant's actually pretty good against Guardian, unless they play Tina. Um, there's a couple things you can do in Gardevoir to make the matchup significantly better for you. Um, oh, gosh. Check your discard one more time for me. Oh, my God. Part of me says we Lysander the Remoraid. <laughs> I mean, um, we got a Lele if we need to do it. No, I think we just Lele for, or we VS Seeker for an end and play it, I think. Uh-huh. Um, oh, no, we don't have <laughs> We suck. Uh, just do the Lysander play. We'll see how this goes. I, I'm pretty sure this will turn out really well for us. And then you want to attach to the Lele on your bench. And go ahead and just sign up here. Cool. 
And the reason we did this is A, get our attachment for turn, and B, if he does Lysander us, we have retreat. Right. Our A ready and prepped. And we don't have to dig back out our energy. So you really want to not play card not play Pokemon down if you can keep a strong lock without it. If you could help not lose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean not losing is like always the key, obviously. I wouldn't play anything here and I'd just silent fear him again. Okay. Um and part of the reason is he just actually I take that back. Play the team now. And why why ooh. That's <laughs> yeah, okay, do that. Grab that. Puff. Yeah. Okay. And then if I see like a DCE then I should do something. We should get a second more and try to develop a board. Teammates. No 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 no. None of that. Don't okay. Put the raw so, stuff spread. Uh if he gets a DCE he does eighty to us. It knocks which us out. Is, knocks us out. So yeah. Grab the do the ralts and um, and grab a lele for a second more because okay. we just want to develop one more phantom. You could theoretically end two. Neither one of those is are incorrect plays. Um, I just prefer drawing extra cards, and we're ending ourselves to four, which kind of sucks. Um, so you play the phantom down. Energy two. Uh, check the check the discard real quick. No energy, I think. No, no energy. So yeah, play the energy on the Phantom. Um, save the Super Rod for next turn and Silent Fear again. Whew. So now we're at a point where if he teammates for DCE Curlia, he has no play next turn. And we're put in a position where if we... All right. This is a lot of things, so keep that in mind. Okay. If we Lysander the Curlia, hit D Valley, Psychic, and find another Trevenant, we win the game with the Tree Slam. Mm -hmm. We can also win the game. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I forgot he's evolving. Yeah, there's no way he's not evolving there because he's playing to his outs. Right. So yeah, go ahead and promote the Phantom. Um, Ultra Ball, the AZ, and another Ultra Ball. Okay. And you're grabbing a Trevenant. Yep. <clears throat> and then you're playing the T-Mail first before the Super Rod. Okay. Good. Play the, get the diva. So and I then check your discard before we do that. Okay. There are two energies in there. Okay. So yeah, you do two energies and the break. Was there a break? Oh yeah, duh. <laughs> yeah. He just took a knock on the break. Yeah. And then you VS Seeker for the Lysander, because we're committing to this play first. Okay. Um, it also gives us one extra card, which is probably always correct. There's a theoretical where well, Zero Sick is all better, but whatever. And then Shaman for six. And if we hit an Ultra Ball, I think there's like maybe only a 10% chance we miss this. And there we go. Awesome. And we win the game. Good job, Zebra Grove. You played well. <laughs> There's I there's so much. There's a I, lot of tracking with this deck. Yeah. And the big the biggest thing like I want people to take away from this is, if you're gonna try to play Trevenant at a higher level than what you're at, figuring out your opponent's hand is more important than anything else in the game besides trying to keep item hawk active. Okay. I think um, I feel about this the same way I felt with Connor and Guard of War. Like, I don't know what I'm doing in Expanded. <laughs> like it's standard, I, I feel like I just have a much better grasp on options and, and stuff. I think there are fewer okay. options and that helps. But um, It may seem like there's fewer options in standard, and there definitely is like statistically, but the options are more linear. Like There's not as many things you can do in a turn. Mm -hmm. So like in Expanded, if you want to like prep yourself really well for either a tournament or like a field that you're not feeling like you're prepared for, 
every time you go into a matchup and you figure out what your opponent's playing, think of the absolute worst case scenario every time and play to not lose. And those are like two really important distinctions because if you play for the worst case scenario every time, you're limiting yourself and not giving yourself a win condition. You're always playing not to lose, not playing to win. Okay. So if you do both of those within yeah. like a happy scale, you'll win a lot more games. There are a lot of people that will just like recklessly uh, go for, I'm going to play to win. Like I'm going to you know take a bunch of prizes really early and make sure I get ahead and then just play to my outs where you can lose the game by like getting end and losing a board state. And I mean, there's a whole list of things you could lose your entire hand, like delinquent still card, you know? Um, so it's one of those things where like expand, it's hard just for new players, especially because it's a hard median to hit. If that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. So, all right. Well, thank you so much for your time. And, um, hopefully we all get a lot out of this, uh, it's a tough deck for me to play, at least, and so hopefully it's <laughs> helpful for a lot of other people, too. Thank you very much. See you guys.